Being agent candidate, does that mean good enough to get you into a college that you're thinking about? Tougher to get accepted, but that's not. Maybe I'll just not upload this video. All right. Welcome to Andy Prep YouTube channel. I'm Andy, owner of Andy Prep Seoul, Korea. I enjoy giving advice to U.S. college admissions, SATs, and other related things. Well, you already know that. This is my third video, fourth video, is it third, fourth, fifth? I'm recording in English to make them more accessible, to make my videos more accessible to a wider audience. A couple weeks ago, we discussed something about SAT scores for top 25 universities. If you haven't watched that video, I will link it up here. Um, there, we've sort of studied together what 25 percentile SAT score means and average SAT scores. What if you score something higher than 1500 on the SAT? Does that mean good enough to get you into a college that you're thinking about? Okay. I want to start off reading this article here. More than 2 million students in the class of 2018 took the SAT highest ever. That was two years ago. If you look at here, it says 2.1 million. Um, that's 25% growth increase from 2017. That's a lot of increase. But in 2019, this number, 2.1 million, even increased a bit more up to 2.2 million. So that's what's happening now. All right, guys, get ready because today I'm going to show you a lot of charts and stats, numbers. It could be confusing. First, I want to show you what College Board offers every year. Now, this is College Board 2019 SAT Assessments and Annual Report. So let's take a look. Um, all this, how many 9th graders, 11th graders, uh, to overall, that's not what we want to look at. Now, here is the number. 22 million people took the test in year 2019 overall. And then if you see here, uh, if a student took the test more than once, the most recent score is summarized. So if a kid went and took the test three different times, the most recent one is in this stat right here. Let's do this. 22 million out of 22 million people, agents, we want to look at agents, right? Agents, students, out of 22 million agents, students were about 10%. That's easy to, to remember, right? Remember that number, um, 220,000 students, agent students here. Now, white students, 43%, close to being half. So that's that. But more importantly, 220,000 agent students took the test. You got that so far. Okay, now, out of all the test takers, only 7% score something higher than 1,400. There's the number. Does that make sense? Reading score, reading and writing score, and math score separate. So your top 7% if you scored something higher than 1,400. Now, among those 10% agent students, here, well, here, right? 25% scored, made it into this 7%, which is higher than 1,400 of total score. Does that make sense? So look at all the numbers, female, male, uh, American Indians, 1%, African Americans, 1%, Native Hawaiian, okay, white people, 8%, two or more races, 8%, but just agents alone, 25%. This is, this is ridiculous. This is a lot too much. Well, guys, this is something else entirely, but if you want to look at this page of this SAT annual report, um, I, will, I will link it down here so that look, you can click the link to see all the details. Uh, but on this page, it shows intended college majors and degree level goal. So most of the popular majors, I'll just point it out, move quickly. Business, management, marketing. I think that's one of the most popular. Biology, uh, biomedical sciences. And down here, engineering. Um, health professional related clinic, science. Undecided, 
um, whole lot down there too. Just keep that keep that in mind. But that's not that's nothing to do with what we're talking about today. Just you know, I just have to explain because I saw it here. All right, this is something we talked about in a different video, but um, this basically shows average percentile for all SAT score ranges, right? So top 1550 to 1699 plus percentile. Um, anything higher than 1500 between 1500 and 1550 is 98, 99-ish. Does that make sense? So that's that, and then you can look at the rest of it down here. Does that make sense? So if you score something higher than 1500, then you are right on the top 1% range. If you lost me here, you could always rewind, go back and watch it one more time. But now here, I want to show you last year, class of 2023 college acceptance statistics for Ivy League schools. The most important numbers you want to pay attention is regular decision application acceptance for all these eight Ivy League schools and early decision, early action application accepted numbers here. Combine them all, you have a total application accepted down here, about total, combined all eight Ivy Leagues here, about 21,168 students. That's a lot of numbers today. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to explain all these numbers today. Hmm. With these stats and facts, you got them all down, right? Let's try to calculate how easy or tough it is to get accepted to an Ivy League school with an SAT score of 1,500. I mean, 1,500, that's not easy to get, but is it good enough? Let's just look at the stats and try to do our own calculation, my, my calculation. All right, here's the truth. I recorded video a couple times. I watched my own explanation over and over. They did not make sense. I don't like them. So I got rid of them. I erased them. I just went to I just went to gym to work out. Came back. Now I feel more fresh. Let me try this one more time. I hope I hope I could do this better this time. All right guys, I made a video yesterday. I edited it. I watched it and I messed up the numbers. That's probably like ninth. 10th time I messed up all these numbers. So I'm doing it again. I'll do a better job today. Let's do this. Here is my cell phone camera setup. And then here's a piece of paper. I'm going to write it, record it. I think this is gonna work. I hope this works. All right, 2019. How many people took the SAT? 2.2 million students took the SAT. Now, two, out of these 2.2 million, about, what did I say? About 2% scored something higher than 1,500. And then if you do the math, 2% comes out to be 44,000 students. All right? Okay, now, people who scored higher than 1,400 about 25% were Asian students. If you apply that, you know, somebody who scored higher than 1,400 probably covers 1,500 as well. So that this number will come out to be 25% are Asians out of these 44,000. So the numbers, whoop, students. 11,000 students are Asian students who score, probably who score, something higher than 1,500 on the SAT every year. Are you with me so far? Does this make sense? I hope this makes sense. All right, next. If you remember what the Ivy League stats said, each year Ivy League offers about this number of offers. In other words, accepted, right? All eight Ivy League schools combined, 21,000 about. Now, from here, about 10 to 15%, I assume, will be legacy students. You know, parents who graduate from that school. So let's say, I don't know, the average 12.5%. These people should be subtracted from that number because these are special cases. And usually we, we want to assume this case doesn't apply to 
our students. So that number, 12.5% out of that, is about 2,646 students. We minus that thing, we subtract it from that number. And then we get this number. Okay, so besides legacy students, about this many students are getting offers from Ivy League schools. And from here, another assumption, I think about 20%, that's a little extreme, but about 20% will be Asian students. So 20% of that number is 3,704 students are what? Asians. You with me so far? That number. Now, if you remember from this page, right? This page. Again, 11,000 students are who score 1,500 SAT or higher, right? Getting offered that many. Now, these are a number of offers that Asian students probably received from all eight Ivy League schools. Now, offers. There are students who get offers from multiple Ivy League schools, right? So I assume on average, there are one student who's getting accepted to like two to three Ivy League schools. But let's be generous here. So let's say only half. There probably be only like someone like me who only, only got accepted to one Ivy League school as a decision plan. But there are other kids, other students who get accepted to Ivy League schools, like multiple Ivy League schools. Let's say on average, two offers. So we divide that into half and then we get this number. So you could also think, this number probably, you know, close enough, I think. But is the actual number of students going to attend freshman class um, to all eight Ivy League schools combined? So, out of 11,000 students whose SAT scores are higher than 1,500, again, 1,500 is not easy to get, only probably this number will end up attending Ivy League school. And this many students will probably receive offers from um, Ivy League schools. Does that make sense? I know numbers are not perfect here, but I'm just trying to show you today that this is one way to look at how tough it is to get into an Ivy League school. I'm going to get a lot of dislikes because of what I just explained. Was this a bad move? Maybe I'll just not upload this video. The main point I'm trying to make here today is that 1,500 is not easy to get. It's very hard to get. That's top 1%. That's great. But that's not the only factor that matters in the, in the game. And your GPA matters, essays, recommendations, letters, like overall package. I hope I didn't depress a lot of students. Making this video made me realize that being Asian candidate makes it tougher to get accepted to some of these top, top American schools just because Asian students perform a lot better than other students out there. I really hope that you get the score you want on your next SAT test. And thank you for watching the video until the end. Once again, if you find my videos helpful, don't hesitate to smash that like button. Subscribe for more Andy Prep content. Finally, I do try to read and respond to every comment. So if you have any questions about anything, on any of my videos, don't hesitate to leave a comment and I will respond to it as soon as I can. That is all for today. I will see you next time.